It seems like immutable Linux distributions are all the rage these days. And a few weeks ago, we got some big news from Ubuntu that they are actually working on an immutable distribution that will be snap based. If I switch over to the desktop here, about a month ago, they released a, this announcement that an all snap Ubuntu desktop edition is coming and that it should arrive by the next LTS release. So the next LTS release will be 2404, so April of next year. You will have your standard classic deb based version of Ubuntu, but you will also have this new immutable snap based build that is available to experiment with. Now, this is probably going to be, you know, beta quality software even when it's released next year. Certainly right now, it will be very alpha quality software. But if you wanted to test this thing out, there are actual builds of Ubuntu Core Desktop, which is what this will be. Now, Ubuntu Core has been around for a number of years. So Ubuntu has an addition called Ubuntu Core that is designed for IoT devices. It's snap based and it's been around at like like six or seven years, but it's not really designed to be used on a desktop computer with a desktop environment and, you know, all of that. But now they're working on this new project, Ubuntu Core Desktop. And if you go to their GitHub page, you can actually find builds of this that you could try out, install it in a virtual machine and see what you think. And that's what I'm going to do. So over on their GitHub, if I go to Actions and under Actions, what we need to do is find any post where they've actually built an image and you can actually filter that with build image here which most of these posts are build image related posts. So I just go to the latest one here. And if I click on it, if you're logged into GitHub, you should see a heading here called artifacts. And under artifacts, you have an image that was built. And if you click on the image, it's, this one is 1.74 gigabytes in size. Image.zip will be the name of the zip file. Let me go ahead and save that because it's only 1.7 gigs in size. This should just take a few seconds to download. And that finished downloading, so let me switch desktops here and let me open my graphical file manager and I'm going to navigate to my downloads folder where image.zip was downloaded. I'm going to right click on it and I need to open this in some kind of extraction tool, some kind of archive management tool. Like if you're on GNOME, you have file roller, which is your uh, archive tool or X archiver I've got installed. I also have pzip, which is a fantastic piece of free and open source software. Let me open pzip may take a second to open because it has to read this rather large archive. Now inside image.zip you have pc.tar.gz. If I click on it inside the pc.tar.gz I should have another file. And it took a few seconds for the second uh, window here in pzip to open, but you can see now I have pc.img. And a .img is something we can actually work with in a virtual machine. We could actually convert that to a, a VDI file, for example, and, and actually boot directly off of VDI, a virtual disk image inside VirtualBox. So what I'm going to do, let's extract this one file here because that's the only thing I need. I need this uh, .img file so I'm going to extract the selected object and I'm going to extract it to uh, by default it's going to extract it to slash temp which makes sense because it's going to be a very big file and it'll get rid of it if you never do anything with it if it's in temp but I'm actually going to permanently put it in my downloads folder so let me choose that and hit OK. Take a few seconds to extract that and now that that is finished, let me close pzip out. And you can see I have pc.img now in my downloads directory. So let me open a terminal and I'm going to zoom in. Let me cd into downloads. And I'm going to run this command here. Vbox manage with capital V, B, and M. Vbox manage is the name of the program we're running. Convert from raw dash dash format VDI. So we're converting... Uh, to a VDI image, we're converting pc.img, which is in this directory, we're converting it over to pc.vdi, which is the virtual box disk image. It's what virtual box can read as a virtual hard drive. Once we convert the .img to VDI, all we have to do is create a virtual box virtual machine and mount the VDI image like it's a hard drive, and boom, you've got your uh, Ubuntu Core desktop live image. So let's go ahead and make that conversion and this will 
take a little time. And it completed, and you can see the fish shell tells me it completed that conversion in 29 seconds. Let me close that out, and now we have PC.VDI. So now let's go ahead and create our virtual box virtual machine. So uh, let me switch to this workspace where I typically have my virtual machines, and I'm going to go ahead and create a new machine. I'll name this Ubuntu Core Desktop. And for the ISO, we're not going to have an ISO because we're just going to mount a VDI image later. Type Linux version Ubuntu 64-bit. Yeah, all of that is good. Let me click Next. I'll give this VM 6 gigs of RAM. I'll give it two threads, my 24-thread CPU. Uh, disk size. We really don't need a uh, virtual disk size because we're actually going to use an existing disk. So let me search for the existing disk. So I'll click Add. Let me go to my Downloads directory and let's add PC.VDI. Now let's click Next. Uh, we get a summary and let's finish. Now we've created our virtual machine. Before I do anything else though, I do need to go into Settings because Ubuntu Core Desktop will not work unless we go into System and turn on Enable EFI. It has to be EFI. And that's one of the reasons why I'm using VirtualBox for this VM is because VirtualBox makes this easy. You just tick on that box. The other thing I want to quickly do is go into Display and give it the maximum video memory that VirtualBox will let us here, 128 megabytes. And then audio, just for purposes of me recording, I don't want any audio in the VM because sometimes it'll conflict with the audio on my host machine. So typically I turn the audio off, so I'll do a null audio driver. And let me click OK. And that, that's just for me because I'm recording. If You don't have to play with the uh, audio settings if you're just testing this out on your machine. And if all of this works correctly, I should be able to actually boot this now. I do get some error messages, but then the screen went away, so I do think it is booting. VirtualBox here, and this is the, I think the EFI portion of VirtualBox booting up here. It's a systemd message here, and it is hung on this one systemd message here, failed to write slash etsy slash machine id. It's been stuck on this for nearly a minute now, but it does look like it's going to get past it. All right, and then we get the Ubuntu Core splash screen. I think it is going to work. Now, the first time you load this, I believe it is going to take a few minutes to actually set up the system. Yeah, you can see it's starting the system because everything is snap-based containerized, right? All the snaps are containers. You're going to see some, some output here at the bottom of the screen. You can see it's going to mount all the snaps. I'll pause the video. I'll be back in a couple of minutes once it finishes this setup here. And it finished the setup that took a couple of minutes and then as soon as it finishes that it boots you directly inside a live GNOME environment and starts this setup screen which you guys have seen on the standard desktop of Ubuntu. You can see welcome to Ubuntu Core 22 start setup and this is where you need to go ahead and set up a keyboard layout and all of this. I am using English. I need English US so let me search the list English US and then click Next, Privacy, I'll leave all of the geolocation stuff turned off. Time Zone, uh, let me choose the Central Time Zone in the US, and then I'll click Next, and then connect our online accounts, I'll skip all of that. Then we need to create our user, my user will be DT. Click Next, uh, let's set up a strong and complicated password for the DT user, and then repeat the strong and complicated password, and then click Next and then start using Ubuntu Core. Now let me fix the screen resolution here once it finally loads up. I won't make this a full 1920 by 1080 resolution because honestly I'm not going to do much with it. So, But I do want to make it a little bigger. Uh, it looks like a search for display doesn't do anything. Let me just search for settings and then in settings I should have displays. Yeah. That is a bit of a bug, I think, that the displays does not show up in like the uh, GNOME dash. Let me do a 1360 by 768, kind of like a laptop screen resolution here. All right, and so this will be a little smaller, keep changes, but at least you will be able to see the entire screen here. So let's get out of that. Uh, one other thing I probably want to do, this is a very large panel on the side. So let's go into appearance. I want a dark mode turned on and I want 
the dock. So the 48 pixels wide, let's shrink that down to about 32. That seems, yeah, much more normal. We've got our home directory here, which I really don't need. The right click, desktop icon settings. You know, like GNOME seems to work beautifully here on the snap-based version of GNOME. Uh, let's go ahead, position of icons, show personal folder, let's turn that off. Yeah, and now all of that is gone. Now I'm not going to do much with this. For one thing, it's very early days. It's very alpha quality kind of software, and I don't know much about it. There actually isn't much written about it over on the GitHub. So, but I can control alt T to open a terminal. You can see to run a command as administrator, you need to use sudo. That's nice, but it does not load the bash RC permission denied, right? So that is kind of weird. So does sudo actually work? Could I sudo vi the dot bash RC? Uh, no. So apparently it says use sudo if you need root permissions, but apparently sudo is not allowed. That's, that's interesting. That's, I don't know if that is normal. Let's do a uname dash r. So the kernel on this is 5.15 so that's an older kernel an LTS kernel and if I did a apt list space dash dash install to get a list of everything that was installed with the apt package manager would it actually return anything no it actually will not because apt that command is not found but if I do a snap list to list all the snaps installed you know, it's hanging for a moment I don't know if that's because it has to return a lot of output or if that command it doesn't like. Yeah, again, it's very alpha quality software, and I'm sure they probably don't want you managing snaps at the command line like this. For one thing, your standard snap command is not built for an immutable file system, right? So I'm sure that this is not the correct way to do this. If I did an lsblk to see all the snaps that are mounted, and now let me zoom back out. I'll zoom way out. I know you guys can't read this, but this is just to show you how many snaps are actually mounted. So here's the loopback devices. It looks like there's 24 that are currently mounted as loops, 25 since they start counting at zero. And if you wanted your LSBLK command to not have all of that loopback device, I've showed this before. All you need to do on any Linux distribution, LSBLK space dash E space seven and it will eliminate all the loopback devices that were part of that output, although you're still going to have a ton of stuff mounted here. I'll have to zoom out so you can even see that. So LSBLK-E7, got rid of all the loops, but it, you can see the partition scheme. They've got one, two, three, four, five partitions and a lot of mounts. So I can't do much in the terminal as far as package management stuff. It does, the app is not here in snap, the snap command. Uh, doesn't look like it does much. The help for snap works, but could I snap install htop? So I know htop is available as a snap. This error cannot communicate with the server. Yeah. And you know, some of this makes sense why, you know, I can't edit my bash RC or why I can't install htop or whatever. Uh, the whole point of an immutable distribution, of course, is that nothing ever changes. So it's a little bit of a different kind of situation with these immutable distributions. I'm going to move the snap store, the software center, over to the dock because I imagine that this is actually probably the proper way to get software. So let's launch the software center here. And let's actually try to install uh, something. So htop, again, I know it's available as a snap. There it is. I click on it. I click install. You can see it's going to install it as a snap from latest stable. Give it my sudo password. And all those snap install htop in the terminal doesn't work, which I kind of expected. It does look like it works just fine here in the graphical software center. I'm sure there's command line ways of doing that as well. I just uh, didn't take the time to look those up. But now if I go back to the terminal and run htop, htop, the command is not there. I wonder if it created a .desktop file for htop. It did, so it's in our menu system. If I click on it, uh, it looks like it ran for a second and then crashed. So, yeah, but again, alpha quality software. And one of the problems with me trying to install software, too, I don't have much storage here. I, I converted that .img to a VDI, VirtualBox disk image, but I don't know how much space is available on that. htop was probably okay if I tried to install anything bigger. I don't know if I would run out of space or not, but we'll just leave that for now. Let me go back to 
settings. Let's get some more information from the GNOME settings here. If I go to about, you can see disk capacity, unknown, OS name, Ubuntu Core 22, 64-bit, the GNOME version, by the way, 42.5. The windowing system, of course, is Wayland here. If I get out of that, if I right-click on the desktop, let's change a wallpaper just to verify that that actually works. Oh, we'll go with the flower. Yeah. So changing wallpaper and everything like that works as expected. Look at the file manager. The file manager, yeah, seems to open just fine. Actually, as far as speed and performance, everything seems to be working as expected. I know some people often ask about the speed of snaps. Uh, I've never really had a problem with the speed of snaps. Now, I don't use Ubuntu. I know typically the people that complain about snaps are, are using snaps on Ubuntu. And, and sometimes in the past, Ubuntu, the speed of the snaps on their distribution, for whatever reason, seemed a little slow. I know I've had a problem in the past before with like the speed of Firefox opening. So let's try Firefox because I haven't opened it. Now, web browsers typically take a couple of seconds to load anyway. Yeah, I mean, that wasn't that wasn't bad, right? The file manager, which we opened earlier, uh, takes a couple of seconds. That's not too bad. Uh, let's see what else. I really don't have much here other than the terminal, which we've already opened. Let's see how the snap calendar or a calculator that is launches. Takes a second or two, but uh, again, I'm not sure that that's any different than the uh, non-containerized uh, packaging of these particular programs. So this is just a very quick and very, very early look at Ubuntu Core Desktop. Now, obviously, I can't do much with it. There's not much installed, and I can't really install much. I didn't add any storage to this virtual machine. And you can see, I don't know how to actually do a lot of stuff, because if you go back to the uh, GitHub page for Ubuntu Core Desktop, with their GitHub page, it's got information about how to test things out in virtual machines, right, to get a virtual machine up and running. But what it doesn't do is it doesn't really tell me like how to actually do things like nothing works in the terminal every command you enter in the terminal uh, pretty much says command not found so i don't know how to actually run commands in the terminal <laughs> like I, I there's just i can't find any information about it here and the fact that sudo wasn't working you know i don't even know if vi was working could i actually edit anything without sudo privileges let me do a control alt t once again and Zoom in. Could I just do VI on the Bash RC without sudo privileges? Uh, I can, but the Bash RC is an empty file. Is that right? Let's do a ls dash la bash. There is a Bash RC here. It is not an empty file though because it is 3,771 bytes. So why? It's just weird. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly how this works. Could I cat the dot Bash RC? It says permission denied. Yeah, so there's some permission issues here. Uh, again, I'm sure that's associated with the fact that this is supposed to be immutable. Immutable means you really can't change anything. So I will link to the GitHub page in the description down below this video. For those of you that want to maybe test this thing out, spin up a virtual machine of your own and maybe play with it. Maybe you guys will get a little further with it than I do. Maybe some of you guys will be interested in helping develop Ubuntu Core Desktop. I'm sure they would appreciate any help from the community. Now before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Gabe, James, Maxim, my homies, Two Bald, Matt, Mimic, Mitchell, Paul, Royal, West, Armor, Dragon, Bash, Potato, Chuck, Commander, Ray, Ray, George, Lee, Marshall, Methos, Nate, Erion, Paul, Peace, Arch, Medor, Polytech, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Tools, Nebler, Willie, and Cinnabit. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick alpha look of Ubuntu Core Desktop would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen. These are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace.